Well, good evening. Merry Christmas, everybody. So glad you could join us on Christmas Eve. Hope you are getting a chance to celebrate in these next few days or have already with your loved ones. And uh, so this, this evening, uh, you couldn't make it to our Christmas Eve service, and so we wanted to make sure you got a chance to get a, just get a feel for Christmas Eve here. And so I wanted to just share a quick word with you for Christmas and also uh, begin with uh, opening up with some scripture. But uh, why don't we take a moment and pray and ask God to meet us. So Jesus, we thank you tonight. We thank you that you came, that you humbled yourself, Lord, not counting equality with God, something to be grasped, Lord, but you humbled yourself, Lord. You became like us. And so we honor, Lord, that. We, we just marvel at it. And we ask tonight as we, Lord, we sit and we listen and we think about your coming, we ask, God, that you would uh, give us the gift of Christmas, Lord. Give us the gift of your grace and your peace in our lives. We so desperately need, Lord. We welcome you here, God, and we ask God to speak to us. Amen. Well, I want to read a short passage from the Christmas narrative. It's in Luke chapter 2, verse 8, and it says, In the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them. And the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was an angel, was with an angel, a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God, all saying, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill to men. Well, nights like these only feel more precious in light of the kind of year we've had. Nights like Christmas Eve, that we get the gift of hopefully being together with our loved ones, having our family around us, celebrating, thinking and reflecting on the birth of Jesus. And what I found is just that there's so much to be grateful for in the midst of a difficult year. So much we can praise God and thank Him for. And I've noticed as I've been kind of trying to do that through this Christmas season as it's arrived, I found myself suddenly singing throughout this season that Famous song, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas everywhere you go. And I found that's happening to me all the time. You, you know, you, you go somewhere and you see something that just is Christmassy, and suddenly it's like the spirit of Christmas comes upon you. That moment when probably you've seen, the, you know, the first lights go up in your neighborhood, and then you just, as you're walking by, find yourself humming it. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. My neighbors have this uh, massive inflatable setup that they use for special seasons, so I know that when the 20-foot-tall Grim Reaper comes down and the Santa Claus comes out, inflated up to this, his, and is sitting in his massive convertible, that it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas in my neighborhood. Or maybe for you, it's when you come home and you found out that someone has pulled out those tacky old decorations from the cold cellar and has now put them on every available flat surface in your home. Or maybe, you know, it's, it's when, you know, for me, it's when I start, I sing it victoriously to Rach as I finally put up the tree, and I use that song to alert the kids every time a new present emerges wrapped under the tree. I, I, I shout them, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. However, when I think beyond some of those obvious triggers of lights and carols and gifts and, you know, Singing that song invites us to ask a deeper question. What is it about something that makes it begin or to look or feel a lot like Christmas? What is it that makes us say, ah, because I see that there, Christmas has broken into this moment? Is it the amount of, that something is red or green? Does that make it Christmas? Is it the presence of a red-suited Santa in every TV ad or 
Thank God for the PC-loaded candy cane ice cream in the grocery store, an invitation to an ugly sweater Christmas party, the arrival of the peppermint mocha at Starbucks, spending too much on gifts for your loved ones. What is it that makes Christmas Christmas? What, what is it that truly captures the essence of Christmas so that when we look at something, we declare that right there, that, <laughs> that's what Christmas is all about. Interestingly, I think the answer comes for us in the form of another famous Christmas carol. In fact, it's the original Christmas carol. And yet it was not a song performed by any human person, but instead a song proclaimed to the world by the angels to the lowly shepherds. And we just read it. They said to them, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill towards men. But if you hear that, you know it's more than just a song. It's a message. It's an introduction. It's a royal announcement. See, what they declared, what the angels declared when they looked down on that little baby wrapped in swaddling clothes who was born to the most, in the most, into a most unusual setting to a couple of seemingly inconsequential people who arrived at this seemingly inconsequential town. It was essentially this. They looked down and they saw that and they said, there, right there, is the most glorious thing that you will ever see. That's glory. They said, there you, have, there, there you will find God himself come down from the highest heaven and is now on the earth. And he has come to bring peace, they say, for all mankind, to let them know that everyone, everywhere, on everyone and everywhere, God's goodwill and favor rests. And that's the message of Christmas, that God's peace has now broken into a weary world. Divine peace has come that can silence every fear, that can calm every raging sea, that will uproot every conflict and bring about rest that never ends. It's the divine peace that's broken into this world. And what I want to ask is, do you believe that? That's what happens at Christmas. That's what happened at that first Christmas. It sounds, when you say it like that, that it sounds too good to be true. It's too good news. The news is too good to believe. And you wonder, has that ever even happened? Has that peace ever taken effect? And yet it is, and it has. Even more, we find out in the angel song that the purpose of Christmas is to share that good news that's come. That this peace is declared to be available right now to every soul, every heart, every person who desires it. The peace of God that transcends all understanding has come to now guard our hearts and our minds in Jesus. The angels are telling us this peace is available tonight. Why? How come we get the peace of God? Well, it's, they, they tell us too in their short song that it's because goodwill and the favor of God are towards us. That you are literally God's favorite. It's the kind of surprise that Christmas is all about. The kind of unexpected gift that we all need to actually receive and open within our own hearts. And it's this, that we are more dearly loved more accepted, more chased after and delighted in God and by God than we ever imagined. That his goodwill is actually upon your life this evening. Even if you hadn't realized it, and even if you hadn't believed it. There is no present more precious than receiving the peace that God has come to give you. God wants you to have it, and there's no one more excited to give it to us than our Father in heaven. How many of us tonight want that peace to break in, to flood into our world? How many of us know right now that we need peace because of the conflicts or the trials or the suffering that we're enduring right now? How many of us together can say we've watched in horror this last year, two years, 
as the world around us has seemingly descended into war, constant war with one another, where you've noticed that every issue becomes so quickly politicized and polarized that it's hard to see everybody else except through a lens of suspicion. How our love for one another so quickly grows cold, where we see families being shaken, communities are threatened to tear apart. And it's in this that we realize in our own lives and in our world how desperately we need Christmas. What we all need. We need to hear that angel song again. We need to hear that good news. And I know that I need it. And I'm betting that you need it too. But what would it even look like if we did believe it? What would it look like if it actually had an effect, if it came in? Well, funny enough, that very thing actually happened. Most poignantly, over a hundred years ago, on a Christmas Eve night, just like tonight, just like tonight, that the good news of Christmas broke in the most unexpected place in the most unexpected way. What happened? Well, it was 1914 and World War I had been raging for almost six months. The battle lines were drawn. The Western Front extended right across the continent of Europe from north to south, split it up. And yet, unlike centuries past, the battle lines and the warfare was not marked by, on one side, you know, the intimidating presence of warriors and horsemen that were stalking around, preparing for battle. But instead, each side is dug in. They're almost unseen, entrenched with little movement and with great loss. It features this new kind of warfare where people just dig in and it's especially brutal and it rages nonstop. And yet, something strange happened in the middle of that war. In the middle of that moment, Christmas happened. In the middle of a war, Christmas broke in. And you wouldn't believe it if it wasn't true. But on that Christmas Eve of 1914, the story is told that single candles began to appear, lit, resting atop the trenches. And then from both sides, you could hear celebrations, singing, as men and women sang their favorite Christmas songs. And then it wasn't just candles lit, but whole trees were hoisted up, raised up, lit with candles themselves. Applause was heard on either side as groups finished in particularly moving melodies. And everybody strained to listen. And then finally, brave men began to emerge, to, to poke their head out, to call out to the other side, to negotiate a ceasefire, even just for a night. But then what happens next was, it's almost unbelievable. Because for that night, but then, then for the, the whole next Christmas day, and then in some places, for almost two weeks, men left their bunkers without fear, and emerge to share with one another, to cross enemy lines, to trade presents, trade novelties, share stories, play soccer, eat meals. They feasted in the bliss of forgetfulness, and they sang with thankful hearts. Wounded men were retrieved from the no man's land and, and cared for, and the dead were buried finally with honor. And no one wanted it to end. Having welcomed that peace of Christmas, the peace of God, no one was motivated to return back to the brutal work of war. And that is our call this evening. To welcome the peace that this Christmas declares has come to us through Jesus to joyfully welcome the peace of God into our lives that this world so desperately needs. And then as we welcome it into our lives to begin to light our candle in this war-torn world and let it shine 
to display it at the top of our trench and to sing the angel song together so others on the other side can hear it, to sing it loud, to sing it wherever we go, to sing forever who, for, for whoever would hear that this good news that God has come down, the glorious God of heaven has come down and has made his home with us. And that's what we want to do tonight is to, to welcome that peace, to light our candles. And as we do it, joyfully say, it's beginning finally to look a lot like Christmas.